Hey guys, Tyler here. The streets of Undermere are narrow and claustrophobic. In many places, the buildings lean out at the upper floors so that neighbors can reach across and shake hands, or more likely exchange unpleasantries. Strange Horticulture is a small shop situated away from the main thoroughfares, but it has the advantage of being one of the few buildings in Undermere that stands alone. Plants you may have noticed need light, and light is in short supply at street level in this town. Recently, the shop passed to me after the death of my uncle. There is much to learn, but one thing is already clear. The rare and unusual plants that he stocked have their uses after all. Welcome to Strange Horticulture. This is a charming puzzle game where I own an eldritch plant shop. I've found it. An excerpt on the elusive wandering view. Come to the library in Ambleside and I'll tell you all about it. I even found something on the gilded dendra that might be of interest. Simone. P.S. Give Hellebore a good scratch behind the ear from me. We come across Victoria Gray. I came here because I have an unusual request. At night I hear whispered voices, too faint to hear clearly, coming from the floor above me, but nobody lives up there. The rooms are empty. My curiosity has got the better of me. I must find out what they're saying. So she needs a St. John's Poppy. So let me go into my list of books. Reminds me a little bit of papers, please. So St. John's Poppy. The flowers are a bright red with a yellow center. Ah, I can scroll throughout. So this is what you are looking for. Here you are. Enjoy. I've identified a plant. Rewards book entry. I see. I've got a plevillium in this book. And I'll, I'll look for it later. Uh, so ring the bell, a new customer comes. David Chafer. Bloody awful weather out there today. Good for the plants though, eh? Got a letter for you. Oh, nice. So this game is also very story heavy. So I'm going to go hard onto it. I'm excited. Gosforth is a hateful town. I was beaten and robbed and left to die in the streets. After many days, I was rescued by a kind stranger, just that I had come to fear that wickedness had infected the heart of every soul in that cursed place. I began my recovering in the woods to the south of the town with a group of travelers. On the northeast corner of the wood, I sat and stared at a bright flower and tears flowed down my face at the reminder that there is beauty in this world. I shall be returning to Undermere soon. Warmest regards, Amos Duncan. What is this? This filled up the will to explore. There's a whole tiled map, which I don't know if I can actually do anything with. I can zoom in and read about the section. So the Greasedale Forest. As soon as I step off the road, two members of the sisterhood step out and remind me that this is not their forest. I am not welcome here. Interesting. A rising dread. Oh boy. Well, let's get another customer. Maybe put away this map. Something got those witches in the forest stirred up. They're not letting anyone through. I had to take the long way around, back through, down through Back Barrow. I never did trust that sisterhood. Anyway, I'm here now, and I've brought Fennet from the south to trade for some lemon dandy. What is up with that sisterhood? Lemon dandy. Curled leaves are thought to be the origin of the name of this plant, supposedly referring to a peeled lemon rind. So it looks like this and is likely yellow. These leaves look similar, and I guess I kind of expected a lemon dandy to be yellow, but this, I think, is the best match. Oh, I could also give it a closer inspection. The smell is faintly off-putting, but not overpowering. The book doesn't mention anything about scent, but if it does, then I could use the closer inspection to help me. Let's see. Ah, I did identify it correctly. Lemon dandies are blue, blue lemons. New plant acquired. Beautiful. Uh, it's still day one. How many customers can I take? Faye Swift. My dreams are becoming more vivid. I saw a woman, her face hidden behind a mask, and next to her, a terrifying black skeletal creature. It stood tall, its roving head scanning the landscape, and though it had no discernible face, I could sense a hint of an expression about its features. It seemed to be laughing but not the joyous laughter of a child, a sickly, horrifying laughter that chilled me like the first breath of winter. 
These past weeks have been getting worse. I need sleep. A forest camphrey. So it's a strong smelling bulb. It produces a beautiful rounded dark blue cluster made up of several smaller flowers. So this is my first guess here. This is my second guess and actually look at the shape of the flowers. It matches the drawing. Still, I could give it a closer inspection. Is pungent not unpleasant? The bulb is a soft yellow. The leaves are waxy. I think pungent means strong smelling, so I'm gonna go with this being the right one. Three for three. So I think the idea is that the plants are going to be harder and harder to identify over the course of the game. Got a wandering view that always reminds me of, oh, what's his name? That old hermit inventor, the wanderer. The view, if you've got it. I don't have an entry for wandering view in my plant book yet. Simone mentioned something about it in her note. I should visit the library in Ambleside. Maybe the will to explore can help me out. Ambleside. The library is here. The library here in Ambleside is one of my favorite haunts. Simone, the librarian, is always helpful and friendly and shares some of my passion for unusual plants. Today, she's grinning ear to ear and can't wait to show me what she's found. Two whole book entries. Wandering view. Excellent. So-called because this fungus can move slowly in the dark, it has been known to cover distances up to several meters in a single night. The gills on the underside of this mushroom form, beautiful flowing lines. They're also hard and sharp, earning this plant the nickname Fingers Bane. How about this one? Not as spongy as most mushrooms. In fact, the undersides are somewhat sharp. Red spores protrude from the cap. It looks like we have our match. Here you are. Identified another plant. Closed. And I have more plants I could unlock. I have the will to explore, but no goal in mind. Let me scratch off this. Oh, wait. Actually, maybe goals from the letters. Oh. They're talking about Gosforth. Well, let me explore Gosforth then. Right near my face cam. I should not have come here. A darkness hangs over this town like an executioner's blade. I feel a rising dread in my chest. That's right, I actually travel there, so that's pretty bad. The rising dread? You cannot let this take hold. But I messed up. I should have read this more closely. Because in fact, they're talking about recovery in the south of the town. On the northeast cover of the wood. And they found a new flower there. So I want to go to there, not to Gosforth. Probably. Right here. Is where I want to go. Ooh, I did find the bright flower among the trees. Awesome. That's sweet. So with that, let's end my first day. I love this game so far. Exploring the map, getting plants to customers. What is this? It started when she found something. Something that she was not meant to find. A book tucked away in a forgotten quarter of the Ambleside Library. Row H, the third river. So this is something I may want to find on the map. Row H, river one, two, three. A dead deer in the river, yellowed and bone protruding from matted hide and rotten flesh. Death for one provides life for many. I get a new plan from a dead deer. Ooh. So I've noticed that my rising dread has reset. So that's good. And let's see what sort of stuff to do. Isidore Burbage. Bring me a sample of Apis Demesis. Uh-oh. I do not have that. Be quick about it. That damn cat is setting off my allergies. As someone with cat allergies, you can suck it up. How do I send him on his way? Because I don't have the plant. It sounds like the Latin name for a plant. I see. Underneath are the Latin names for all of them. Okay. It is a plant with medicinal properties that can aid with digestive troubles when prepared correctly. The rough leaves can be an irritant, only the petals are safe for consumption. Oh, it's probably this. Yes, the leaves are coarse to the touch, that's it for sure. Here you are. I see now, a lot more to consider. Next is David again. Here's your mail. Ah, new letter with a new quest. Possibly. There's an old slate mine at Hard Knot that has some interesting looking fungi growing on it. 
I've never seen anything like them before. They seem to have found a niche in the dark, damp tunnels left by the tramways. I thought you might be interested. I'll have to come across someone who may know that area. Reuben Ward. I'm heading to Greasedale Forest, investigating a possible murder there. Can't say I'm looking forward to it. The Sisterhood are a secretive lot and they're not keen to talk to me. Their leader, the Arda, or whatever they call her, she's dead. My instinct is they're hiding something. The Sisterhood? No. I was hoping you might have some fox button that would help me win them over. An offering of fox button is considered by some to represent a contact of friendship between strangers. Thick, shiny leaves grow in opposing pairs across the stems. There's a couple that have pairs of leaves. Well, surely it's this then. Ah, uh, see how the leaves are pointed at the edge and how these are rounded? It doesn't look like a match. These have rounded edges to the leaves. So I think that wins me over. And that is right. Very nice. Victoria Gray. I was able to make out the whispered voices last night with the help of the St. John's Poppy. There's a medium using the room. Illegally, I might add. Holding midnight seances for gullible gravers. Is there a plant you know of that I could use to give them a scare and drive them away? The harlequin blue. When the bushy blue flower heads die back, they release seas with a downy pappus which assists in wind dispersal. Once dried and hardened, the stems can be burned as incense. As they burn, they let out high-pitched shrieks, wildly believed to be the spirits of dead souls trapped within the plant. The blue flower matches the book. I don't know if the number of points are important, but let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Versus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the area just below the flower looks to be correct. I believe this is our plant. Very nice. The Harlequin Blue. A terrifying plant, apparently. Next, Bethany Coleman. You may have heard the rumors that our, that our Arda is dead. May Arduina bring her spirit peace. The nature of her death is unusual. The Sisterhood does not often look to outside help, but this is beyond our knowledge. If you show my sisters this letter, they will allow you entry to the forest. Be assured of your discretion. We require that you use Mary's Beth breath to bind yourself to secrecy. Wide, waxy leaves, and is a very trustworthy plant. This looks to be accurate. Smooth, waxy leaves. They are quite wide. Oh, that is a wide plant. I, what? I need to be more careful. That wasn't Mary's breath. I need to be better prepared. Oh no, I missed the veins on the leaves. That can't be it. Look for the veins on the wide leaves. Yes, veined leaves and a waxy finish. Oh, this, you do require attention to detail. Well, here you are. Absolutely, and I've acquired a letter. Let's take a look. So I like how this rising dread is just a failure. We have failed in our duty as protectors of the forest. Our secrets have been stolen and the Arda has been murdered. You will find us deep in the Grisdale Forest, a mile from the lake shore, across from Torver. Please help us. Okay, to the forest, a mile from the lake shore, across from Torver. Now, one tile is one mile. So this is the Greasedale Forest. This is Torver. So this must be the shore. Nothing here. A mile from the lake shore across from Torver. I will be going there next. First, Isidore Burbridge again. I'm this close to reporting you, Halfwit? The last pl plant you gave me has made my skin itch furiously. I'll have your little shop shut down and tore to the ground if you don't make this right. I need Butterdale or Mikadu. Well, you asked for it. Not my fault to have this... The, uh... Oh! I need to think carefully, be, uh, carefully about which plant to use here. My actions could have consequences. So, Butterdale has been used for centuries as a cure for all manner of skin rash rashes. And what's wrong with Mikadu? Well, Mikdu is just the opposite. It creates skin ranches. So it's a very simple choice. Now I just need to find these dark green leaves. Is it this? 
These are very similar. I could do a more thorough look, but this is so spot on that I think it's just right. Very nice. That should help him out. Okay, now I'm going to make it to the proper spot in the forest, most likely. This is across from Torver. I want to go a mile into the forest then, so right here. A sister tries to stop me from entering, but I show her the letter and she lets me through. I am ushered into a walled courtyard, and then through a large oak door, along a corridor, and down a set of stone stairs into a cool basement. Lying on a table, draped in silk, is the Arda. There is not a mark on her, but her open eyes are black, her mouth, her veins, her hair, all black as a raven's wing. Do you know what could do this? Asked my escort. I set to work. So here we need Ren. The long leaves of the Rem are known to turn black in the presence of certain poisons, and so can be used to detect them. It has no flower. It smells unpleasant to those who have known death, and sweet to those who have not. Pointy leaves, well maybe this. It has a scent that scratches at the back of my throat. So I must know death? Let me try. That is correct. I extract a sample of the Arda's blood and introduce it to the Wren, and my suspicions are confirmed immediately. The leaves of the Wren turn black, which can only mean one thing. Gilded Dendra poisoning. Upon presenting my findings, I am rushed away quickly. The sisters do not want me hanging around, it seems. They do, however, send me on my way with a couple of plants, which I am grateful for. Two new plants acquired. What well, part of me makes me actually want to go back to those railroad tracks? So it was at Hard Knot, I believe. And let me check this out. Here, we need Clavillium. So let me snuff this out. According to legend, Clavillium can be used to open any lock, no matter how complex or secure. Heart-shaped leaves. Oh, look at these leaves. Look at the stems, they match. I think this is my Clavillium. Absolutely should be it. The gates swing open slowly, complaining loudly on its rusty hinges. After a small, short exploration of the tunnel, I am rewarded with three plants. Ooh, a bunch of fungi, some glowing. Oh, that's going to be exciting. Well, I believe I've done everything I can. I'm going to end the day. Let me see what end day stuff there is. Oh. Book both fascinated and terrified her in equal measure. And after studying it for some time, she reached a decision. She would never use the power she had discovered. She would hide the book where it could never be found. Well, I don't know about you guys, but this has been incredibly mesmerizing. This will be awesome to pick up later. I really hope you guys have been enjoying this because I am massively intrigued. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Have a wonderful day and peace.